Hello. And I just had a pretty good scare because this video probably won't be very long because I made a video. I was wearing my red flannel shirt because I had just talked to my uh, 25 year old um, psychiatrist, psychologist lady that comes to my house and sees me. And uh, so I was like, well, I already got a shirt on. Now I can wear, you know. I, I'm not too uncomfortable right now. I can wear a shirt and do a video. And uh, I talked to all you kind, gentle-hearted folk. And I did the video. And then I played it back and no sound, you know. And then I tried again, no sound. I'm like, I just bought this thing like, uh, a little bit before. That was my Christmas present to myself. And it cost 160, 100, 116 bucks. Uh, brand new it had everything but the headphones I don't know what purpose the headphones would serve or whatever but I was like is this thing broken you know and it was lit up like you can see the red light and everything that tells you it's recording and I had even checked that during the video you know just as a joke I said I better make sure this is recording if I'm going to be talking about stuff like this and uh, it came back with no sound so yeah, I assume this is going to work. I mean, I don't know. The plug where it's plugged in, in into the thing here, it's just got a simple cord going from the back of the mic into the uh, USB thing. I mean, I jiggled around with it. I think maybe it was loose, but the, the power was getting through to light up the light, but uh, the other, uh, the sound wasn't getting through somehow. I don't know, but... I don't really have, I've been spending money like water. Just, I, I feel like, you know, it's like apocalyptic times for Steve because, uh, you know, I got the bad leg, I got the CRPS. Guys, the last time I took Xanax was uh, on the 4th at 7.30 in the morning. And, uh, yeah, so I just, I just felt like spending some money and I hatched a scheme in my head where uh, see, I used to be a, a sports car dealer for years and years. That's why my, uh, that's why I got like, I don't know how many transaction deals on uh, eBay. But I would make, you know, I'd augment my uh, income that way. So I know a little bit about how to do that. My problem was I like to speculate, right? And if I speculate on players, I might as well be just buying a voodoo doll. Let me explain what I mean by that because I would like buy this guy is really good. This guy's gonna be really good, so I'm gonna sink like you know fifty or hundred bucks in his cards, and then the dude within two weeks would tear an ACL. So those cards are like a voodoo doll, man. And just me buying them was sticking a pin in them. This guy would get hurt, be out for the season, and then these other thing would happen to me, where. Um, the guy would just get tired of playing, you know, he just like, yeah, I've had enough, I played enough. Like that Jamal Lewis guy, he was just like, uh, a, a great running back and he was still pretty good. And he just like, they just get tired of playing, you know, they just get tired of taking the beating. Then I was a big Corey Dillon fan and he won a Super Bowl with the Patriots. And I bought like a bunch of high end stuff of his, like a lot of his cars that were super high end. Don't know how many hundreds of dollars I had sunk in his stuff. And uh, Belichick has this thing where he just totally unsentimental dude. He just, he did it here in, in Cleveland with uh, Bernie Kozar. Everybody loved Bernie Kozar, but, uh, you know, Belichick's like, nope. I don't care what anybody thinks, man. Vinny Testaverde's our quarterback, so... He started, he, they got this guy named Lawrence Maroney that was split in time with Corey Dillon. And Corey Dillon was working on career records. He was, a high, you know, he had like 1,500-yard rushing seasons. I don't mean to bore non-sports people, so I'll make the overall point being. is like, the Corey Dillon guy was like, I don't really, I already got my Super Bowl ring. I don't really want to play for another team. They're bringing in this young guy that I got to complete with and split my carries with. I'm not getting as many carries. He was like, hey, why do I want to do this anymore? So he just quits. But when they quit like that, you don't have time to unload the cards and make as much as you can. I'm, you're just stuck with them. 
you know, so you 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 just ate three hundred dollars, you know, you just burned it up because um, uh, he wasn't like a yeah, he wasn't like a considered like a, he was a great running back and he was working on some serious career records, you know, like he already passed Jim Brown and all that stuff, and uh, but he just got tired of playing. That stuff would happen too. But anyways, I got this plan in my head for next year. You know, make, make, uh, watching the, uh, that's all, that's what life is about, is like having something to look forward to, no matter how dumb and silly it is, is like, I got this plan hatched out in my head that I'm not going to tell you about, because it's top secret, and, uh, it's like, yeah, I can get these guys cards right now, like, super, super cheap, uh, autos, you know, autograph cards, they sell for the most, so I'm buying these low numbered autograph cards of this guy for like a song, like nothing. And if things work out the way I think they're going to work out, and I have some experience as a sports fan, and I've taken my bruises and my bumps, as the Corey, Corey Dillon thing illustrated, and I know with football you got to dump them uh, cards in a timely fashion, unless you got a Tom Brady type guy, like, uh, that, you know, there'll always be a market for or whatever. You you know, a guy a guy that somebody will pay fifty dollars for his card like one year, the next year you can't get ten dollars for his card. So but I got this plan hatched out in my brain and it's like, yeah, I gotta wait a whole like uh, uh when, whenever football season starts, I gotta wait till next football season starts, you know, to see if it works out the way I think it'll work out. So anyways, I've been blowing money on that. That was a hundred and sixteen dollar a uh, Christmas present to myself. I took my guitar to the doctor. That cost me a hundred dollars for that doctor's visit. They did a pretty good job on it. I had this other guitar that's a bass guitar that I, I it's going to cost me a hundred dollars for some reason to flip it over from a right hander to a left hander, which is still cheaper than buying a left handed bass. Uh, but I don't know if I'm getting like uh, treated like a woman at the car mechanics with that or not because you have to flip over a thing called a nut. And the nut on a guitar, there's a left-handed nut, and there's a right-handed nut. And it's on a guitar, it's the part that's up, the strings run through before you get to the little turny things to uh, tune your guitar called keys uh, for the non-guitar people. And uh, they want, they said, well, we, you know, they, they got me a bone one. I'm like, I don't really need a bone one. You know, who, do you, who do you think I am? Getty Lee or somebody? He's a famous bass player guy from Primus I mean but they bought me a bone one and then I, and I, I talked to my agent who uh is taking care of this stuff for me and he's like well he says that's just the way he does business and I'm like are you sure this guy ain't stroking me and he's like no no he's a good guy and all this and stuff and I'm like you know bone is usually ivory which you know it, it hikes up the price and it's, it shouldn't cost I think that much to flip over a base but it costs like a hundred bucks to flip over to space, but the point be overall point being is I'm like spending like money like water, because I feel like I got the heart thing threatening me all the time. I got the CRPS. I'm 20 days off of Xanax. I got my knee where I can't hardly walk, you know, and I'm falling down all the damn time, which I figured out has only been the last month because when I talked to my uh, psych lady when she was in here, she I said when's the last time I saw her and she said a month ago. I said, was I talking about this falling down stuff then? And she's like, nope. So I'm like, well, it must have just started, but I've fallen down at least six, seven, eight, nine times, ten times. I don't know. Some of them falls are pretty serious. I'm not going to bother, but I got a cut, actually, from one of the falls on my leg where I fell. I talked about that already, where I fell into the uh, Sarda van when I went to Coleman. And, uh, oops, I said a name. Uh, it's just so tiresome. Why, why does there have to be evil people in the world where we have to keep our secret ourselves secret and all that? You have to worry about these bothersome evil people that's, uh, stealing your information that don't understand life and don't understand what life's about. To have or to be, bitches, man. You think life is about owning things? Life is about being. It's about who you are. It's about your story. It's about the things you've done. It's about the way you've behaved, man. It's not about taking people's shit, you know? It's not about stealing stuff, having things. And uh, he says, uh, as he drinks out of a 
$20 coffee mug, but I'm sorry, my coffee mug was just too cool with a no more Mr. Nice Elf. And, uh, anyways. But yeah, um, I don't, yeah, yeah, that whole, like, to have or to be thing is a title to a, uh, one of my favorite authors, which I wish I could read. Uh, um, I put his book on the, uh, internet, but his most famous work was called Escape from Freedom. And he was a, uh, a Jewish dude that lived in Germany when Hitler was on the rise. Lucky for him, he had the resources to get the fuck out of Germany. I think he might have even come to America, I'm not sure. But he got out of all that mess. But, you know, then he started to, like, speculate on why people behave like that. Why would they follow a guy like that? Why would they, you know... So his seminal work is called uh, Escape from Freedom. Anyways, I don't want to go into all that philosophical stuff and whatnot. Because, frankly, I'm not having a good brain day anyway. But yeah, that's my favorite um, philosopher guy. Most philosophy you can keep that I've read. But that, me and that guy, we click. And uh, he taught me a lot. I mean, I used to read, like, uh, him and uh, Immanuel Kant. Or however you... Kant? 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 Well, however you pronounce the guy's name, but it's K-A-N-T. In my opinion, them is the only two guys you need as far as philosophers. And I've read Camus and, you know, I've read other philosophers, Thoreau, and all that stuff. But those guys were the only guys I needed. I didn't need nobody else. The other time was a waste of time. I, I read some Hegel, H-E-G-E-L. And uh, I'm like, I don't know what the hell this guy is saying, but I really don't care. <laughs> not only do I not understand what I'm reading, I don't even care to understand it. Cause I, I, I think it's just a bunch of nonsense. I think I'm reading nonsense instinctively. I'm reading nonsense. But I was like, yeah, I think I'd rather brush my teeth with the wrong end of the toothbrush than to uh, read any more of this book. But I gave that a fly too. But I did the best I could. Maybe I put my my uh, face too far away from the Yeti, which uh, I did the best I could with my uh, nine and a half years of schooling, because I went to the 10th grade for half a year after I got my uh, spinal tumor removed, and that was pretty much it, it for me, as far as school. Then it was about survival, it was, it was about st trying to stay alive. And uh, my life was very school of hard knocks after that. So, anyways, the thing I hate about that other video not being recorded, the sound not being recorded in it, is not only was I wearing a shirt, but you always get that sneaking suspicion that I was far more interesting in that other video. And it had to be a, a better video because I had more energy to put into it. But anyways, um... I guess I can try muting this microphone and see what happens. I'll unmute this for a second. If I can find the red button. Let's see if that worked. I was a little phlegmy. You know why I was phlegmy? Because I'm a freaking dumbass addict that smoked like between 6 and 10 cigarettes last night. I can't be doing that. I got a bad heart, and uh, but an addict is an addict, and uh, that's why I'm so relieved to find out that I'm not a benzo addict, that I'm just a guy who's physically dependent on benzos. I have no desire. I, I have enough Xanax in this building right now, and I have access to enough um, volume that I could sell the shit on the street for between 3000 and thirty five hundred dollars. I don't want any of that shit. And like I was honest with I know it's crazy. I know it's a wild idea. And I know it usually doesn't make any sense, but I was actually honest with my doctor and or psychiatrist type person and I printed down exactly what I was taking and I gave it to him and I showed him I wasn't following the Ash Ashton method. So that means that I got even less uh uh, volume. I still got a massive amount of volume, mind you. 
but I still have less because he said, you know, I'm supposed to be taking, I think at this point, um, 40 milligrams a day or something like that. And he dropped me to 30 milligrams a day. He says, I might even be supposed to be taking 50. I don't know. I just threw out through that Ashton method out because they want me to start taking out like taking, start out taking uh, 70 milligrams of volume a day while I'm taking Xanax. I'm like, I ain't doing that. I'm not doing it. You know, I can, when I was buying it off of the street, I didn't need that to get by. So I'm not doing that. I'm not, you know, plus volume was making me sleep all the time and sleep at weird hours. I didn't like it. And, uh, the psychologist lady who knows a little bit about pharmacology that I talked to today, she's like, a benzo is not a benzo is not a benzo. They're not interchangeable. You see, people get that idea where like you can take like Xanax and substitute with volume and everything will be groovy. And she's like, no, I was like, Oh yeah, I know that. I was, I was like, uh, yeah, I'm experienced, uh, I'm still experiencing uh, some of the withdrawal symptoms. It's just, uh, the volume makes it tolerable and makes it to where I can, uh, you know, I can, I'm not like I was. It's where it was just suffering upon suffering upon suffering. So, yeah, unfortunately for me, um, I was too afraid of my doctor to ask him to do that. I did bring the Ash, part of the Ashton manual in there, but he was so unresponsive to even looking at it. And he had never even heard of Heather Ashton before. You know, I didn't want to rock the boat. So I was like, you know what? Not having volume is uh, a lot better than not having volume or Xanax. Cause this guy might, he might drop me off of the Xanax. I think that I'm just trying to get more drugs off him. Who the hell knows what's going through this Fruit Loops head? So, uh, I, um, yeah, so, anyways, so I got all these drugs around here that I can't sell, and I could sell really easy for lots and lots of money, but I won't sell them because, um, uh, I think it's morally wrong to, uh, sell people addictive substances like that. Like I would sell if I could get medical marijuana and insurance would pay for it, which no insurance. I asked my guy at this point blank, no insurance, no matter how good it is in the state of Ohio covers medical marijuana. It's all out of pocket. You got to come in here with a credit card or some cash. And, uh, I'm like, well, so much for that idea and uh i would i would have no trouble at all selling excess um uh, the, in, in ohio it comes in vials and edibles i don't know if i've already covered this crap before or not i don't know in another video because i'm not having a good brain day but you get a you get the uh, vial of thc liquid that you put in a vape pen or you get edibles but um um i would gladly sell excess uh files or whatever and not have a problem with it because it's uh not a physical dependence type of thing you can get addicted to thc marijuana but it's up here it's not like you know opiates and uh benzos it's a different deal i would do that i have done that in the past like with just joints. I never, I don't ever remember selling a bag of weed, but I remember this one guy bothering me to sell him a joint. Oh, that's a kind of a funny story because you want to quiet down a room. Uh, there's like four or five. Let's see how many guys was there. There's five guys sitting in a room and, uh, I happen to have the bomb and I happen to have the pot or whatever. So this was, uh, 20 odd years ago. And, uh, one dude's a real bad pothead there, you know, and he liked what I had, and he's like, man, why don't you sell me a joint of that, and I said, I said, dude, I don't really want to sell you a joint, he just kept on about it, and he kept on about it, and I was like, finally, he wore me down, and I was like, okay, you know, and I rolled him a joint, and he looked at it, and he's like, you want me to pay three dollars for this toothpick, uh, and he, then he kept on about it, and I said, listen, you shut the fuck up right now. I'm going to walk over there and I'm going to punch you in your fucking head. 
It got real, everybody was all high and happy and everything. It got real quiet at that point because they knew I was dead serious. And the guy's like, okay, man. Because um, the people that, they all knew me. So they all knew that where I'm, I got like that irrational, crazy temper where I would have, you know, yeah, I would have done it. I would have went over there and <laughs> would have just punched him in the head either. I was upset because I didn't want to sell him the shit in the first place. And then he goes me into it and then he complains about what I give him. You gonna sell me this toothpick for three dollars? I'm giving him a break on a decent joint for like three dollars of like top quality smoke. And then he's like uh, busting my balls over, and I'm like, I, yeah, it got real quiet in there because people was waiting to see some bloodshed. But anyways, yeah, the other video I was talking some about the Canton police and how Canton used to be called a uh, little Chicago. Because it was so bad that it's uh, uh, per capita, it was sixth in the nation uh, in uh, crime rate. It was like the sixth worst place in the nation per capita crime wise to live. And um, the Canton police didn't play. And I didn't know if I told that story before, but I told my story about where I almost got my ass kicked by cops because I was a dumb kid. And I'll make this real short is I, I uh, was just in a park. And, uh, the guy's shining a light in my eyes, like, you know, blinding me with the spotlight and asking me a bunch of stupid fucking questions. And I'm just the guy in a park. It just happens to be like 5.30 a.m. He didn't ask me anything like, were you this or were you that or whatever. He was just bothering me. He wasn't looking for a suspect, which I've had before because I match descriptions sometimes. And I was like, I'll tell you what, why don't you just fuck, shut up. Let me do this right. I was like. How about you just fuck off to the cop, right? The cop gets out of the car, and there's an old cop, and there's a young cop. And the old cop immediately is reaching for his baton. And the young cop is looking at him like, oh, Jesus, not this again. And then I got scared when I, he gave him that look like, oh, here we go. You know, he He's seen all that shit go down before. Then I got scared. I started backing up toward the, I'm in a park and there's a, a shitty uh, pond in the back of it. And I start backing up to the pond and raise my hands up. And I'm like, you don't want to hurt me, man. You don't want to hurt me, man. Come on now. You know, I, and my plan was I wasn't letting that cop get nowhere near me with that baton. Cause I'm start looking around and I start thinking, man, it's five 30 in the morning in the summertime, right around sunrise. And there ain't nobody here but me and these two cops. These guys can do, they can, they can rod me, kick me if they want to. They can do whatever they want to, to me. You know, this is can't, this is, this is can't in Ohio, man. Can't police did not play back in the day. And I know this because my best friend was a can't cop for like 30 years. So I'm backing towards the water. And my plan was to jump in the water. And, uh, you know, I figure, I figure if I jump in the water, he's not going to want to jump in the water after me. And I was like, that's the park I talked about before that had an island in the middle of it. And I said, I'll just go out there to that island and sit on that island until cooler heads prevail. But, you know, he, he got started, he started gaining ground on me. And then he was like, man, you better put your fucking hands behind your back right now. You better turn around, put your fucking hands behind your back right now, or you will get hurt. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I put put my hands behind my back and uh, he handcuffed me, roughed me up a little bit. But uh, I mean, it was just jerking me around, like twisting my arms behind my back and stuff. And he threw me in the police car, but he didn't like bang my head accidentally on the uh, roof of the thing, put me in or anything like that. So he wasn't that bad. I don't remember his being that bad, just getting like, just getting rough handled. And then he just went on this tirade, like, like, I don't have to eat your shit, you fucking young punk. If you don't recognize your elders, you could, should at least recognize your betters, you little piece of shit. And then he just, the foulest fucking screed I ever heard anybody come out of anybody's mouth. And I, I'm like a dumbass. I'm like, but, but, but. He wasn't even hearing nothing I was saying. I just shut up and took it. You know, and I thought about it. And I was like, yeah, it's better to take like a, getting called a bunch of names and taking a bunch of profanity thrown in your way than uh, taking blows from a nightstick any old day. You don't have to think about that one too long. So nothing came of that. He wrote a bullshit summons because I was in a park and I just pissed him off. 
and uh, so the ju I went to court, and the judge, I went up and stood in front of the judge, and the judge looked at it, and he said, I don't see anything, uh, this isn't filled out correctly. He said, I don't see uh, even the time of arrest. I don't see anything on here. And it's it, it's a it's a, a summons for criminal trespassing. I wasn't criminally trespassing. I was in a damn park at 5.30 in the morning that's open to people, you know. And uh, he just wanted to, that cop just wanted to pay me back. He wanted to throw me in jail overnight, but I had my bicycle with me, and they're not allowed to put a bicycle in the back of the cruiser, so he had to call in a, a wagon to pick up my possessions. And uh, there was another complication to that story, which I was actually breaking a law, but it was like running a do letting a very hyperactive dog of mine run loose through the park without a leash because there's nobody in the park and the dog's friendly anyway and I was just letting him run through the park. It's, it's a big park. So I was actually was uh, breaking a law and I'm like, well, I hope that dog will make it home or, you know, I can call and I mean, I don't know what's going to happen to the dog, but, you know, I, I can't confess to uh, breaking a law. This guy's already wanting to throw me into jail for over nothing So he's because he's like, you're spending the night in jail. And uh, so I was like, the dog was there, you know, he's talking to me at the car, and this dog's, like, you ever see Tigger in the cartoon? This dog's, like, jumping up and down beside me, and, uh, like, hey, where are we going? Are we going to do something fun? Are we going to do something cool? What's happening? Hey, what's going on? And, because he was that hyperactive, that he was just jumping up and down, he's like, is that your dog? And I'm like, no. I'm like, well, he sure seems to like you. At least you got one friend, huh? I'm like, yeah. Anyways, um, so he had to call on a wagon for my bicycle and uh, it didn't show up in enough time where he cooled off and he just wrote, wrote me a sum, bullshit summons and drug me before a judge and the judge said to me uh, I can't do anything with this he said it's not filled out properly he said uh, Mr. So and So leave my courtroom now and do not ever darken my door again and I said yes sir and I left and at the time, I was flat, flat broke. So whatever the fine would have been for criminal trespassing, I might have had to serve time. Um, but yeah, Canton City Police, they didn't play back in the day. And uh, that guy told me a story. I guess I'm allowed. I'll tell one of his stories. It doesn't make him look bad at all. But he's a young cop. And they like to pair young cops with old cops. So... Uh, he's having trouble handcuffing a guy and the older cop said his name and said, just move out of the way, like in an irritated way. And he pulled a homemade sap out of uh, his pocket. And if you don't know what a sap is, it's a little weighted club and he just smacked the, the suspect in the head with it and knocked him out and then said, uh, go ahead and cuff him now. That's the way you do it. So that's the way stuff used to be in Little Chicago. That's what they called Canton back in the day. So I'm not going to talk for too long because of all the cigarettes I smoke. It doesn't feel good in there. And uh, um, I have my uh, uh, leg appointment tomorrow, which I'm, of course, nervous about because I'm nervous that they won't get anything done. I'm nervous about walking on ice and snow when I'm falling in the house. And, uh, yeah, but if I have to Julia Roberts it, man, and I can't take it anymore. It's just too much. If I have to Aaron Brockovich my ass off in that place, I will do it. I will do my best acting job I can to let them know that something needs done about this. And I'm going to go in there on a walker. So, um, yeah, I'm not messing around. Something's getting done with this leg. No more treating the symptoms and having the symptoms come back. If it's got to be surgery, it's got to be surgery. Whatever. They got to do with it. They got to do something with it. Because, I mean, uh, benzo withdrawal is bad enough, but when you're immobilized and the only way you can keep your bus yourself busy is uh, making these videos on YouTube or trying to make audio books. I don't really uh, play guitar much anymore, but I do, did take my guitar to the doctor. I am planning on getting back into that and getting the necessary calluses back on my fingers. And uh, 
I don't know if I mentioned this or not because I'm not having a good brain day, but I actually put a piece of my audio book I've been working on for a month and I was half done with it. I put it on uh, YouTube briefly just to see, because sometimes stuff sounds different when you put it on YouTube. And it was horrible. I was horribly disappointed. I'm like, I'm scrapping all of it. I was like, I have to figure out how to use this microphone. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. If I have to sit up and have it in front of my face and then read over top of it or I, I'm doing something wrong, you know. And as far as like taking a picture, instead of digitally superimposing the picture on the actual file, taking a picture of the picture, that doesn't work too good, you know. Um, so I was trying, I was working with that a little bit. I found um, you can buy like uh, Movie Maker um, software and stuff, it's just more money, and I've just been spending too much money, so I found a, a free program that works with Windows 10, 10, which is what this computer is running, but this is funny, is like, the introduction to the book was actually only eight minutes, but it only allows you to put the digital picture up for seven seconds at a time. Now, I don't know how many times seven seconds goes into eight minutes, but I bet it's a lot. And I'm not like going through click file, but I drag then, uh, you know, how many, oh my God, how many times would that be? I don't even want to think about it. It's like, I am not doing that. And I couldn't figure out how to do stuff because I'm old and I'm not techie. And I was even looking at videos on YouTube and one of them had like a 12 or 13 year old kid on there with a, uh, Australian sound and accent, like, uh, trying to, uh, teach me how to do, to use this other program and uh, add it to the other the program I had already downloaded and all this stuff. And I'm like, I can't figure this stuff out. And I am not a, not only am I not a young man, I'm 51 years old, but I am not a well man. And there are only so many grains left in the top of that hourglass. And I don't know how much time I want to spend on uh, trying to figure out our technology of today. You know, maybe I should just stop. If I'm going to be blowing money, maybe I should just buy uh, the Movie Maker uh, thing. It costs like 70 bucks to uh, 130 bucks or something like that. But I've been spending money like water. And I just I just figured, like, why do I want to just keep spending money? I, I try to do this stuff. Maybe I can do this stuff for free. I don't know. But the other way, it, uh, the, other way the program works is, like, you put your, um, the video like I'm making now. Say I wanted to put a, a picture of a much more handsome dude, like a Colin Farrell over top of me. You know, you could just like uh, uh, access that file and put it over top of this and then drag it all the way across uh, me talking. And um, then, you know, it would just be my voice and a picture of Colin Farrell. So, you know, in certain parts in this book, I'm reading feature, feature animals. So I could just, you know, get that picture of an animal and drag it over top of me reading the book and then you can look at the animal while I uh, am reading the book instead of just that looking at a blank screen and you're definitely never going to see me reading on here because I, I already have that on one port frog one and you don't want to do that nobody wants to watch anybody read I don't think you know Neil Gaiman which is one of the more interesting uh, writers of today uh, he has a I think it stars Ian McShane, but he has a series out from a book that I could sort of get into, but it's sort of not, called American Gods, that they made a uh, series out of. But um, I'm trying to think of the other stuff that he wrote, but he's kind of an interesting guy. He he writes like um, stuff that's like really dark. He might have been the guy who wrote Coraline. I don't remember, but he writes like really dark, like fairy tale type. It's almost like it's for children, but it would scare the shit out of children. It's like complicated Grimm's fairy tales, you know, with stories and whatnot. Uh, the Graveyard Book is one of his books. I know that. That was a really good book. It's kind of sad. Um, but yeah. Anyways, so I don't know if I want to blow my money and my time on this. I just know that I'm just tired of putting up an inferior product when it comes to an audiobook because eventually the whole purpose of this is for me to do my own aud audiobook and self-publish and then die like I'm supposed to and uh, not make a penny from it. 
and uh, that is that is my plan. So you know, because I do not do this for viewers. I do not do this for uh, money. You'll never see any ads on any of my videos, and you know, this is this is just me being me. And I've always had a somewhat, I'm an acquired taste at best, and um, you know, I live long enough to know this. And uh, so this isn't about that. At, originally, this was supposed about me having this nice little stroll through the meadow of two months of uh, an uplift, making an uplifting series of videos where I'm getting off of uh, Xanax. But then I am not going in the Betty Ford clinic and having rose petals thrown before my feet and uh, getting served asparagus tips and uh, souffles and filet mignon. I am not getting rose petals thrown before my feet. I'm getting broken glass. You know, I'm getting meth heads. I'm getting uh, police. I'm getting bad landlords. I'm getting bad knees. I'm, you know, you, you get the picture. I don't have to uh, explore that any further. So, I don't remember what else I talked about in the video where the sound didn't come out or whatever, but I will talk to you uh, next week and I will let you know uh, what happened with the knee doctor or what they're going to do with me so I can walk because I'm telling you man sitting around in benzo withdrawal and doing nothing that's what made me spend money on this and want to do the audiobook project and uh, because you just can't do that you have to keep occupied you can't just sit there in benzo withdrawal and do nothing it's just you can't do it and since I can't get up without worrying about falling over now and my leg hurts so bad, I don't even like sitting in a recliner with my leg up. Um, you know, I'm just laying around. I knew I, I had a couple of Benzo people on here comment like it even made them nerve wreck, their nerves wreck to watch me lay in bed. It's like, how do you lay in bed like that? You know, it's like uh, it. it <laughs> So, yeah, so that, if I can get around, I can walk and, and I can go outside. I actually enjoyed, I might as well, since my videos are always long, I might as well tell you a funny story, which I may have, hopefully I didn't already tell you this. I'm sorry if it's a repeat, but it was just nice to be outside. I was outside in downtown Canton. I don't live in Canton, but, you know, I had to travel there. And uh, it was just nice being outside, but it was kind of wet out. So, I think I already did tell you this story. But anyway, it's the story about me having a wet ass with shiny pants on a vinyl seat. And spending a whole trip trying to keep from sliding down onto the floor. Because I can't feel my lower extremities right. So, I just got a handhold. Because I can feel my upper body better. And I'm just strained against that. And, it's, you know, I hear a GPS saying, get on get on I-77 and, and travel seven miles and take this exit and we're going to another city to pick up some other cripple. I think I already told that story before anyway. I lose track, especially on uh, bad uh, brain days like today. So, you know, and old people do that. Old people and alcoholics, they do that. They, they uh, throw the same stories back at you over and over again. So, if I did that, I'm sorry. And, uh, but yeah, just because of the way it feels in here with uh, all that um, soreness and tobacco-induced phlegm and all that nastiness, I'm going to get off here. And, um, you yeah, know, I don't think I have anything else to report except for I actually cleaned up my house because I hadn't cleaned up my house for a full month. I mean... The dishes might have been in the sink for a full month. I don't know, but my leg is messed up, so I'm not doing didn't do any housework. But I was like, I got this psych lady coming in here, man. If she sees my house looking like this, and we're talking about after the cleanup, we're talking about like five bags of garbage. And I may have already talked about this, but I had a couple of people that uh, uh, came in here and uh, that helped me out, and I was carrying out five bags of garbage that I had. Put, and I actually put a basket on a walker and was going around picking stuff in the floor and putting it in this basket that's made for a, a bicycle. But I just took tape and I taped it to the front of the walker and was cleaning my house up. And it's never a good sign when you hire somebody for a job and they show up with a, 
a, a pack of four tall boys in their hand. Never a good sign. But anyways, I got some work out of them. And I got some things done, but I did most of the work myself, myself, which is why I'm so exhausted and mentally fatigued. And I haven't eaten today, except for uh, one thing of yogurt, and it's uh, 5.14 here. And uh, so I should go eat. And uh, But the thing I was worried about is, like, the psych lady sees this place like this, man. I'm worried about getting thrown in a group home because, like, you can no longer take care of yourself. And she laughed at the idea and said, well, you know, you're in your right mind. That's for people that are, like, uh, got, you know, severe psychiatric issues and whatnot. And I'm like, well, I don't know about that, but I wasn't taking any chances because I, I want my independence. I don't want to be thrown in nowhere. And so that, yeah, so I worked my ass off yesterday. And I don't know, like I said, I, I, I failed on making the video where I was wearing a shirt because... The, the sound wasn't coming out, so I don't even know if I'm repeating myself or not at this point. I'm highly irritated and phlegmy and just annoying and uh, to myself right now. So and I'll, I'll get back in touch with you uh, uh, next week after they got s something to tell me about my leg. And like that song says, tell me something good. Ooh, yeah. Ooga chaka, ooga chaka. Tell me that you like walking. You know I do. I, I, you know, that just makes all the difference in the world. I mean, um, just getting outside and walking around. The days that I would be able to get out of the house when I was going through um, the withdrawal, those were just better days for me. You get stuck in a house and, you know, with that withdrawal and, just being stuck in the house, even when you don't have withdrawal, it's just, it's just rough. But when you have withdrawal, man, it ain't no party. Yeah. Another thing about having the hole in the wall is I think the voices travel through that hole in the wall. And I hear stuff I don't need to be hearing. I don't hear a lot of uh, <coughs> happy noises. So that's probably why I hear a lot of the angry noises. So... Anyways, I will bid thee adieu, and uh, like I said, I'll pop in here, pop back on here in a few days, and uh, I'll let you know what's up. And as usual, thank you for following my story and being patient and not being offended by partial nudity. Goodbye. <laughs>